So, I am a big fan of LEGO, specifically the minifigures that you get with most of the kits. Here's one right now, it's Captain America, we like him, he's a fun one. As you can see the printing on him is absolutely brilliant because he's an official LEGO minifig, you can clearly tell who it's supposed to be under there, and all the detailing is really really good, there's even back printing on it which we really really like. So, Captain America, he is a good one. Here's another one, it's Tony Stark as Iron Man. We also like him because he has a cool helmet, which also lifts up so you can see Tony Stark inside. And he's even got a face on the back, he's angry. So yeah, all in all, two really, really good minifigs because the printing on them is brilliant and they look fantastic. Now then, I was browsing around on eBay the other day and I found some fake Lego minifigures, which are not official in any way. Here's one of them now. It's Ant-Man. Remember him from that movie that was sort of alright? Yeah, he's looking pretty good. And I, I snapped this one up immediately because the actual set it comes in is like 80 quid. And I'm not paying that for a single minifig. Not a chance in hell. But, as you can see, from the outside, you can't really tell much of a difference. I mean, looking at it next to Steve Rogers or Captain America, they really look about the same. And if you look even closer at him in the face department, you can sort of see a little bit of eye shape under there. And if we take the helmet, well, if we take the head off as well, that wouldn't help. But if we work the helmet off, you can see he's sort of, uh, yeah, Scott Lang, he ain't, let's be fair. But, yeah, I mean, it does the job all right. But the main way you can tell this is not a real minifig are the legs. As you can see, these have got two prongs on either side just there and no bits in the middle. Whereas if we look at Steve Rogers over here... He's got little pylons in there. Pylons? Is that the right word? Yeah, whatever they are. They're little things there which connect into the into the main torso and keep it nice and solid. And with that man, it's significantly looser, so therefore not a real minifig, but a very good imitation of one. Let's be fair. So also browsing on eBay, I found this one. It's the Iron Patriot. Yay, he was fun in that movie he was in for 10 minutes. You've got an angry roadie underneath and sort of a blaster on the side his machine gun kind of thing and all his wonderful thruster gubbins and such once again printing on it really really good and he does have if i can work the helmet off preferably not the head off at the same time which is a wonderful trait with these uh fake minifigs the heads oh for god's sake he does have a second face under there but the uh, chance of me actually getting it off without several minutes of work is not really worth it but yeah a good fake minifig. Once again, he's also got the uh, the fake legs underneath, which proves he is not a real one. Also going along with that line, we've also got the War Machine from that Civil War movie. Once again, Angry Rhodey. And yeah, he's got the blaster cannon on the back, which fires away like that. That's pretty cool. And yeah, once again, really good printing. I wasn't going to get either of those two in actual minifigs, because they cost an awful lot of money. That one goes for £32 by itself. No, thank you. So, the main reason that I wanted to do this video was because I found what well, is quite possibly some of the best fake minifigs I've ever, ever seen. And, um, tell me, do you recognise this young chap just here? Yes, it's Ash Ketchum from Pokemon! Now, this eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that there is no actual official Pokemon Lego set. That's because the licence is... Well, presumably Nintendo don't actually want to have a Pokemon license sent out for minifigs or anything like that because Nintendo hate money, apparently. But, for what I found on eBay, it's the terrifying second face of death underneath there. Look at that, that's just... Oh my god, the eyes! <laughs> yeah, um, for a fake minifig, it's actually surprisingly high quality, like, even better than the, uh, the, uh, the Avengers back there. Um, the pieces really well molded it's there's no scraping on any of the details at all the pokeball itself is actually really good apart from that little white bit just there and the legs i've got the studs on the top so they're almost like they've just been hand printed or well, say hand printed or machine printed or whatever it is but they're actually surprisingly good i say they because not only do we have the original ash ketchum there we also have a other collection of other characters Mainly other versions of Ash from different generations of the TV show, but we've also got um, Blow Up Doll Misty and Serena here without her hat. And yeah, they're all the same as the other one. They're all really high quality. The printing is, for the most part, decent. I mean, 
they all do have back faces on them as well, ranging from moody to, um, well, whatever you call that, to be fair. But, yeah, and there's no real back printing on the back of the legs, but then again, Lego never really do that for some reason, I don't know why. But, yeah, they're all really, really good quality. I'm very impressed with that. Now, the thing is, they also came with some Pokemon, which you could build. This is where the quality started to fall down a little bit, if I'm perfectly honest. For example, this is supposed to be a Pikachu. Can you see it? Because I bloody can't. I mean, you've got the general shape with the ears and such, but, um... Yeah, that's not really close to being a Pikachu, is it? Ah, well, points for trying, I guess. Uh, you also got an Eevee. Yep, sure. Uh-huh. You know, you got your Gengars and such. You got the three starters, which is pretty cool. You got Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. Not necessarily in that order. And, you know, you, you can definitely tell what they're supposed to be. Um, Quality-wise, though, uh, sure. Um, a Pidgeotto, apparently, which is smaller than a Bulbasaur. Sure, whatever. But my favourite out of these is um, is this. I'll give you a couple of seconds just to uh, try and figure out what this one is. It's, um... No, it's not that one. It is, in fact, Mewtwo. Yeah, you know, Mewtwo. The big, all-powerful thing that's about as tall as Ash is. Yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. But then again, like, the actual pieces of these 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 things are actually really good quality. They'll snap together really well. There's no extra bits on the side of it that you could stab yourself with. And the faces, while terrible, do actually look like the Pokemon. So, you know, I actually kind of approve of these, which is pretty good. Let's get them out of the way, because now we're getting on to... Shall we say the lesser end of the uh, decent eBay finds? Um, so to give you a little bit of context, this is the Hulk, obviously. As you can tell, I quite like the Marvel ones. But this is what was known as a big minifig. So he, his body is all one piece. The arms are separate, and it's just a, it's a it's significantly bigger than a standard minifig. So that's the Hulk, and I found, I'm a big fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Obviously, who isn't? And I found some fake minifigs of them on eBay. And I thought, yeah, let's get them. This is Groot. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks all right on camera, but he's sort of crimsony instead of brown. And yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That is. It's a very derp face, so let's be fair. And. Yeah, like, I mean, there's only printing on the front, there's nothing really on the back, apart from a little bit of moulding, but... Yeah, as far as giant fake minifigs go, is to scale, I guess, like... Yeah, he's to scale with the other ones, just, sort of. But, um, he's not really to scale to the rest of the Guardians, and you'll see why that is in a bit. But yeah, Groot, starting off fairly well. I'm doing these from best to worst. Just keep that in mind, Groot... It's probably the best one out of the lot. Just keep that in mind. So first up, we've got Drax the Destroyer. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's supposed to be Drax. He's got his tattoos, he's got his knives, he's got his angry little face. Don't quite know what that is up there. I think it's just a... Yeah, it's a... Oh, it came off. Well, that's not too bad then. So yeah, Drax on the whole. No printing on the back, which is kind of disappointing. But um, yeah, on the whole, Drax, not too bad. He's probably the best of the actual minifigs. And that's saying something. Next up, we've got the wonderful Gamora. Yeah, she's not too bad either, to be fair. She's got her sword. Did she use a sword in the movie? I think she did. It's been a while since I saw it. But yeah, she's all right. She's got her green face and her hair and everything like that. She also has... Oh, I thought she had a face on the back, but apparently she doesn't. But um, there's also no back printing on her either, which is a bit of a letdown. You know what else is a letdown? Not being able to get the hair back on. That kind of sucks. Oh, and I've lost a base plate down the floor. Oh, all right. There we go. So yeah, once again, not too bad. Starting off fairly strong. Now this is where it starts to fall down. This is Nebula, played by the wonderful Karen Gillan. Um, 
Yeah, she's, um, I don't know what it is about this one, but this one, there's something about this that just doesn't sit right with me. I think it's the fact that there's no silver arm, which is something, which is quite a defining trait of Nebula, if I'm perfectly honest. But, yeah, the face is alright, there's nothing on the back, once again, starting to see a theme here. But, yeah, on the whole, it's, it's okay, she's got swords, she's got things to fight Gamora with, I guess, but, um, yeah, still not all bad. Next up, we've got Ronan the Destroyer. Yes, this is the first of the. This is the only bad guy in the set. He's got his wonderful cloth cape on the back and sort of his hammer kind of thing. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, I suppose. The um, it's not. It is two pieces. It isn't supposed to uh, to do that. That is a whole separate piece. It's very large and sort of not very to scale, sort of. And the eagle eye amongst you will also notice that there's sort of crinkling on the cape just along here. That is where the actual cape was trapped inside the plastic bag that it came in. Top level of quality this is. Um, and so this is where we start to scrape the bottom of the barrel, unfortunately. This is Peter Quill, Star-Lord. I've left him with his helmet on for now, for reasons why you'll see in a minute. Um, well, for starters, the guns are the wrong colour. And, uh, yeah, he's, um, the hair's sort of been painted on in a very haphazard way. And uh, I've actually had to stick the uh, the hands in with blue tack because they don't click in at all. Because the quality, because the the hands, they sort of do that. Well, it's supposed to be like that to clip into the, into the, I don't know why I just did that on the internet, that's a terrible idea. But they're supposed to clip in like that, but these hands have sort of got like a little kink at the end of it. And so they don't click in properly, which is quite bad. Uh, also, he's missing the back of his foot. I didn't break that, that's how it came in the box, which is um, very, very poor, if I'm perfectly honest. Even though they do have the, uh, the the cool bits at the back, which means they should be decent, but they're really not. Um, also, that's his face. I didn't know your moustache was supposed to go underneath the eyelids, but uh, yeah, he also came with a second head, his um, his hair. Yeah, quite. It's uh, it's actually purple in uh, from what I can see, but through the viewfinder it doesn't look. Yeah, that's um, it's a bit disappointing, if I'm perfectly honest. However, we now get on to what is quite possibly the best and the worst of all of these minifigures. May I present to you the one, the only, Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> oh my goodness, what are those eyes? Look at that, he's staring into your soul like some sort of demon. My god, is he terrifying. Not least because they decided... <laughs> they decided to give him the full-scale minifig legs. So he is, um... Uh, well, if we just bring him up next to Star Lord, <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny, but he's um. Hang on, I'll, put, I'll put him on a base plate so you can see them next to each other and see the scale. Yeah, Rocket is supposed to be about down here, and I just oh my goodness, just comparing him to Groot, that's just. I suppose he's probably in scale to Groot a little bit, but oh my goodness, it's just those eyes. Look at that! Staring into your soul! And he also came with a gun, which is just as terrible. It's just a collection of pieces that some will look like a, like a big sort of thing. And of course, even with his ginormous gangrenous scale, he still falls on the floor because he's a terrible, terrible minifig. But it's still horrendously out of scale. And it's just sort of... Yeah. I mean... 10 out of 10 for style, but, um, actually, no, not even that. It's utterly, utterly terrifying, and he will haunt your nightmares. Oh, my goodness, I just don't know. So, yes, that's a collection of fake Lego minifigures and the such. Um, yeah. Don't get the Guardians ones, they're just, they're just, they're just terrible. Like, honestly, I honestly feel ripped off, even though I paid about £5 for the, for all of the Guardians. Paid about the same for the, uh, the Pokemon ones as well, so... 
You can find some decent stuff on eBay, but um, if you're buying fake Lego, apparently not.